you guys, we're going to be looking at the advanced user guide for the NVIDIA Shield today. We're going to be moving pretty quick, so make sure you use pause and rewind to keep up. We're going to start in RetroArch, and looking at how to change emulators or the cores, which are the systems that the games are played on. Uh, certain games that have some trouble, you can change the uh, emulator or core sometimes, and it will make the game run a little better. So we're starting with the N64, this one's actually kind of important. Uh, they removed some of the cores they used to have, like four or five of them. They're down to two, and interestingly enough, the Gless 3 is the one that runs really well. The Gless 2 appears all pixelated, not good at all, not playable. So make sure you choose the Gless 3 for the N64, very important. Look at uh, some of the other systems like Game Boy Advance, you only have one option, uh, so that's the one you got to use. But good to know that you can change them so you can improve some of those. All right, and we're going to move straight into changing the input on the Nintendo 64 controller. You're going to want to follow along with the controls as we put them in. We have the controller at the bottom right, which will show you the button you should be pressing. So I'm not going to say each button. I will note that the select button I set as my LB button because I use it for uh, uh, the hotkey association. So I also set my hotkey for the select or for the LB button. So it lets you use some hotkey buttons on that controller. LB is very rarely used in game. Um, the uh, yellow buttons are going to be mapped a little bit differently. Two of them are mapped as your A, B, X, Y, just like they are on the other systems. Uh, it needs to look a little bit like a SNES controller. It'll still run properly. And then the last one will be your uh, L2, R2 button. That will be your Z. Um, it depends on the controller you have. There's lots of different N64 brands, so I would try both of those, pressing your Z button for the L2 and R2. And then uh, that's it, pretty much. And then when you finish this up, you're going to want to make sure that your configuration saves. Easy way to do that is to go to configuration, make sure it has save on exit like ours does, and just quit RetroArch and then start it again. If you don't do that and you unplug the system or it closes improperly, you're going to have to do the inputs again, not fun. Next we're going to look at how to change the emulators, download new emulators, uninstall emulators. They're all going to be in the same load core spot, fortunately for you. They all come installed on the RetroArch Plus, uh, so you can see all of your emulators here at least, and this is a good place to reference which games you can play on RetroArch. And we're moving straight into playlists here. This is super important. Uh, follow along if, in case you ever want to add or remove games or if you want to need to rescan your drive, you're going to need to go to this manage playlist and remove the system that you already have scanned. So this, I'm doing Nintendo 64, I'm going to delete the playlist. Uh, that will remove it from the list on the left hand side here and that's super important if you're trying to uh, rescan the drive. Uh, in case you're missing a game that you should have because if you scan it without doing this you're gonna have doubles of every single game and one of them will work and one of them will not and it's uh, makes your list very uh, overbearing with all the different games on it so you see this directory just finished scanning the N64 games will be back on there easiest way to do it if you're ever having issues finding a game uh, just delete the lists rescan them as you saw there under import content, and they should be good to play after that. All right, so we're going into online updater here. We're gonna do cheats real quick. Update cheats is an easy way to make sure that your cheats are updated if you're connected to the internet. Uh, it doesn't take long at all to download them. Once you do have them, you can head into a game, and then to access the cheats while in game, you need to hit the back button on your remote, which will pull up the RetroArch menu. It's the same back button that if you press twice, it would take you to the home screen of NVIDIA Shield. Um, when you press that back button, you can also set it as a hotkey, which I would highly suggest for your controller. So press the hotkey that opens up the RetroArch menu, which I'm doing right here. And you're going to go down to where your cheats are, way down at the bottom, not under options. There they are. And from here, you can load a new cheat, find the proper system. This can be a little bit much with all these games. You gotta find the proper game. So we're on Super Street Fighter 2. We have the European one. It plays a little bit better. And you just hit the cheats from here, and uh, the list will appear below uh, in the last screen that you're on, and it'll have a few different uh, 
the names of the cheats. Obviously, you have to decipher what the cheat is by its name. And that's pretty much it. Add the cheats to the games you want to play. That's our advanced user guide. We had nothing else. Enjoy.